Hello, welcome back to Average Gamer Plays Factorio. Um, I've done a little bit of work off camera. We now have lots of iron coming in from a train. And that train, let's hop into it. I shouldn't have really stood right in front of the train because it could have sort of left at any time. There's, uh, let's empty the train out so that it leaves the station. Now, because it's only powered by wood, it does take a while to um, get up to speed. And then there's the next train waiting there. So this is the train line that I built in the last episode and I've added this T-junction to it and then the train comes along, stops at this station and let me just put that into manual mode for a minute so that then fills up with all the ore from this very large uh, ore patch which it's still busy putting mining drills down on I didn't have enough on me when I first built it now I've very slightly tweaked um, the um, the blueprint that I had just to basically get everything to line up so now what I've done with this blueprint is I have set the grid size on it and I've added a couple of miners and I've lined up the um, the power pole slightly differently so now if I were to sort of put it down on this copper patch uh, B for blueprint library row of mining drills uh, if you hold down shift it draws this little yellow circle round a green circle round it and then when you move it across it lines up with where it was so i was having trouble when i first used it on the other copper patch at the top that it was putting everything down and it wasn't quite lining up properly well that's now fixed and it will line up a lot better i don't think we'll need this copper mine because um fact, let's just control z and take all that up uh, we won't need this one because we've got the uh We've got this one up here nicely working, but I will set up uh, a stone mine now. That one's got 3.9, 4.8, That's an 8.8 .8 million, but I don't think I'll need to go all the way up there considering that this one is still sort of relatively close down here. Uh, 13, 24 million. I can do another spur off here to go to that coal. Um, how much there's 329,000 there's only 380,000 so I mean last time I looked at that that was like 700 and something and even then like half of that's gone again now so this ore patch was getting used up quite quickly um, 329,000 so I don't think it's going to matter too much which um, which of these we do so let's just um let's see which way around the belts going yeah they're going that way let's do that click 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 and when it puts down the um mining drills on top of the patch it only covers the it only puts the drills where there's actually ore underneath it So that's why, you know, some of them have got more on it than others because there isn't ore over here to mine, basically. Okay, so we can take up some stuff down here that we don't need. There's some stuff down there we don't need. There's some stuff there we don't need. Now, I've run set of power poles down the middle of this 
railway line. So basically, line that up with there. We'll put that power ball back in there to power this one. And now everything's got power. So we've got one, two, three, four. That's easy enough. We'll just have the standard uh, four to four balancer. Um, which we will tell you what we'll take off this row of power poles here. We don't need those. We don't need quite so many of those coming out. Um, belt balancers, four to four. That'll do. And then we'll have going into that now we'll just take this station here pretty much sort of lock stock and barrel so there's the other train now waiting for that let's just pick all that up um, now we'll do this one maybe slightly different in that because that's the end of the line so we'll just we'll just put this down roughly in the middle of that we won't have this line along here uh, we won't even have those along there we'll just have this tell you what we'll take this up as well but far too much down there, but still. We will build what we've got there. Uh, power pole from there to there so that that is now powered we'll basically have a spur line sort of coming up here so the train is going to come up from the bottom so we'll have a line now it comes down um train comes down it goes round the loop we'll tell you what we'll have to move that power pole no we won't we'll get that to just sort of train will come down there off there round fill up and then it will lead back in um, yeah what we'll have to do is something a little bit sneaky 
that it's going to lead back in up there. So we're going to need signal there, chain signal there. So then this train will stop here if there's another one coming down here. And then down here we'll have a signal there and a chain signal there. We don't need any signals here because it's either going to go round that way or round that way and there's nothing else in the way of it. But we will have a signal um, there on the track and one there. So that is now filling up. We will call that one uh, Stone Pickup. Let's head back to here. So we've got this train now queuing up here. And this is fine because there's only there's only sort of two trains on this line. So that's fine to be waiting there. This one is now full and it has been for a little while. So we'll put this one in automatic. That goes back to base. This other one behind it then will move into the station. There you see it going. We'll ride this one back up to the base where it will refuel because I've set up a refueling station to uh, load it up with wood. We'll use up all the wood. So this then goes into the iron drop-off station. This is request a chest here requesting 500 wood. So when the train comes in, that fuels it up. So that's now got 300 wood in it, it's full. And then we've got some more logistics bots. Here we go, refilling my uh, belts and items. And then there'll be some more bringing, uh, bringing the wood to fill that because that has only got 482 and we're requesting 500. Hopefully. Eventually. Yeah, there's some wood going into there now. So that one was for iron. That one's for stone. So we'll build a train on there. And we'll set up, we'll copy this. Over to there as well. Put it in range of the power pole. Uh, make sure that power follows all the way through. So that is also going to request 500 wood. Now we've only got 527 in storage. We haven't actually got as much wood as I thought we would have in storage. So this won't actually last too long. Um, we picked up some copper, some iron ore. We'll just put it back onto that train for a minute. Uh, we've got lots of stone, so we'll just put that into there. That's going to be where the stone unloads. So this is now got, or getting, fueled up with wood. If we press L to look at what we've got in the uh, logistics, we've only got 400 and something bits of wood, which is fine. We probably will get a lot more in the future as we start using the bots to build things and then take and chop the wood down, chop the trees down. But this is only going to be a temporary little thing to use up this little bit of wood. So. I will probably get these to, um, I'll probably set up a coal train. I think this stop here, that's for coal. And then I'll feed a line from here down to fuel these other trains from this coal drop off. 
So that has now got some fuel. So we'll say that is going to go to stone pickup until it's full and then come back to stone drop off until it's empty. And we'll probably only need one stone train. And let's just make sure I'm not in the way of it. So when I set it onto automatic, off it goes. We can watch it on the map. Now, one thing I should have done was set up a radar. I'll head down south in a minute with uh, on another train with a few radars. So that should now go down this little loop down here to this station and if we had a radar we'd be able to zoom in and see that loading up but I can click on the train and I can see can't zoom in on there to see it but I can see the inventory here on the little train um, panel there And when that is full, it will head back up and then we'll have to um, unload the stone at the other end. And off it goes. Quite slowly at the minute, but... It will eventually get from A to B. Right, now then. We do copy this from uh, well, we might as well just set it up again. It's not any trouble to set it up again. Now we might not need four belts of stone coming in here because let's have a look down here we've only really got that one's now finished we'll have two belts of stone coming in because we've got one going into this smelter we've got one going onto the um, the, uh, onto the bus and we've got two lines here I think we originally had three but we'll have two lines seem to be enough so we'll run the stone um, just above this um, iron so we'll have sort of two lines going across there What we'll do is just have a little, basically, I think we'll have a very basic 4 to 2 balancer. There's probably one in the book. Uh, 4 to 2, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Two splitters leading into two more splitters. But that then has two lines and it kind of feeds from these four evenly. No, it won't. 
I was going to say it'd be cheaper with the undergrounds to just move this line going up, put the underground in that, but this is too low. I'd have to sort of move this down and we'd have to use another set of undergrounds to feed this line through anyway. So if I was going to use this splitter to pick up off this second line down instead of the top one, we'd need another splitter to feed the top line through. So you'd use two sets of split, uh, two sets of undergrounds anyway. Okay, let's see how far we can get. That will go from there to there, that's good. Now we'll do one splitter going down there, because that's cheaper. Because this is just one line, so it's cheaper running split the not the splitter, the underground. Well it's cheaper running the underground there on the one line than it is running these two lines underground. And again it'll be cheaper. But this is still just a yellow belt to just do that. And then what we'll do is just feed these into the back of these belts here. And then that will just sort of carry on as though they were all just coming in off this mine in the first place. So that's cool. We're not using an awful lot of stone at the moment. We're not doing any research at the minute. Um, right, I will now start to take up some of these old unused power poles. Bearing in mind that if I take something up, it might well cut off the power supply to the whole base. I think is what it's just done there. So we'll just feed that through to that. Back, let's have a little look at the electrical network. So we've got all the power coming in um, off this um power station here and it goes along here and up this line to the left of the coal so just below where I am at the top of the pole I'm going to set up uh, a second link from there to there so that now has so that electricity comes in along there and through up the stone mine and into the smeltery down there and up here to the other side of the smeltery here. So that's like one little line of redundancy. Um, not that we've got any biters or anything coming in the way that will get in, you know, that will damage anything. But, you know, it's only in case I take up a power line that I shouldn't have done. And then realise that everything's broken. So, now that we've got plenty more iron and copper and stone coming in. Uh, let's see... We'll do some more research lab speed five worker robot speed five mining productivity three rocket silo will have spidertron will have and some of these researches are actually quite expensive so i'm fully expecting this to like to sort of ground to a halt um And we'll have worker robot cargo size 2 as well. So that is just going to sort of chug away. Doing lots of research and using up all these uh, science packs here. And then the whole base is going to leap into action. It's using half of the power. Now, talking of power... We had this Kabarex thing set up. And it was going quite slowly. So what I've done is I've added some more centrifuges down here to um, do the uranium processing. Has it picked up any more bits? We've got 22. We've still got one in there. Let's just put that into the other machine. Right, we've got 23. We need 40. 
I'm temporarily going to take that one up so that only this one machine will work. So any any um, any of this uranium-235 that comes in, it will go into this left-hand machine. So I've taken up the uh, inserter for the right-hand machine. Now when this starts working, it'll take 40 in and it'll put 41 out, but then it'll take the whole 41 in and it'll keep doing that until this builds up to about 82. I think it, the, the machines like to have enough inside them to sort of make another full unit. So we've got to wait for this to run kind of 40 cycles and each cycle takes a minute. And we can speed it up a little bit. We can maybe put some productivity modules into this. In fact, I think I will. Let's get some... Let's just handcraft them for now. Let's get a hold of some circuits before the factory gobbles them all up. Let's get a hold of some green circuits. And we'll go on to... Right, we need to grab some blue circuits. Am I making them anywhere on the mall? Or anything? I don't think I am. I think the only place I'm making blue circuits... Let's just get my bots to catch up with me. The only place I'm making the blue circuits is up at the top here for science. So let's just grab... section of those I can now make four productivity threes which is kind of uh, I'll make two we want to have some more speed threes as well because I want to put a couple of beacons down we'll have two of those now we still need more advanced circuits which we've got over there, so let's just grab that and we'll make two more of those. So you can see down here, to make all these circuits, it's got to make, you know, 20 level 1s and then 5 level 2s and then a level 3. And then another 20 level 1s and 5 level 2s and a level 3. Um... And these things take time, so, you know, these are 15 seconds each, and it's got to make 40 of them. 30 seconds each, it's got to make 10 of those. That's five minutes just for that one. And then another sort of two minutes for that one. So this is going to take sort of 15, 20 minutes of just sort of hanging around in the background and waiting for that to finish crafting. Um... And we definitely sort of want the productivity modules in this Kavarex because any any little help that we can get, every little you know, every little helps as the saying goes. So that's just got 24 in there. And that's just from you know, we hover over this one, that has mined 812 products, that's done 865, that's done another 812 and 156 each on these. So out of you know, 2,400, about 2,700, maybe 2,800 that it's mined, and in fact that one's got, you know, that one's got 2,300 in it, that's got 155 in it. There's a few more going around the belt here. So, you know, 2,500, 3,000 items, and we've only got 24 of those. So in the meantime, let's set up, uh, we've still got a fair amount of coal on this patch and it doesn't look like we're running out of coal uh, at any time soon. So I'll tell you what we'll do, rather than set up another train for the coal. Uh, right, so we've got coal coming down here for the bat. We've got loads and loads of 
wood in these chests. I thought we had more wood in storage. I'll turn those into supply chests. I will put another robo port down so that they're within range. I put that down there, it's within range of both power and the actual bot network. You can see here they come already. So they're going to pick up the wood. From there we now have 3,882 in storage, that's fine, but when that runs out, and I'll have to keep an eye on that because I won't know that it's run out until I see that a train has run out of fuel, I'll get a little red warning symbol down here to say that there's a train run out of fuel somewhere. But then I'll just run uh, a splitter off here and run this belt up the side and just use that to, um, uh, I might go up the side, up, up over here and then along and then through to each station here so as long as the trains are sort of refueled at the base you don't need to refuel them at the destination as well unless for example you're doing you know you've got a remote mine over there and then a remote smelting area sort of in between so let's say we've got a smelting area here and it's picking up copper from there and iron from there and sending the plates back out if there's a train only going from here to the smelter and then back to here to drop off the ore, then we'll need to set up some way of refueling that train. At the moment, all the trains kind of just go forwards and backwards. This this train here for the um, uranium, this is getting fueled by the coal. So I'm just running a coal line down there for that um, that that one train. But there's an awful lot of coal kind of just sort of sitting on the line here waiting to be used. Um, but there goes another train. I don't know if that is iron or stone. That's a stone one. Okay. Right, talking of which, we've got um we've got some radars. So we've got lots and lots of um, power poles down here. We can just stick a radar near any convenient power, power pole. Let's put one round about there. And then let's manually run down here and just fill this with radar so that we can see what we're doing. So this research for the mining productivity is a thousand units. It's, uh, I think it's already finished one of the researches that I started. I can't remember. Is it the lab speed? Um, research. Speed. Oh, now it says low power. So is that now? Yeah. That wasn't that long ago that that was actually. Uh, looking all right wasn't it and now all of a sudden low power so what's using it all up it's probably you know one of the other factories has kicked in making um making one of the other sciences so um no we're only producing we're not producing as much And that is because the coal is actually not as plentiful as it used to be. Um, make sure that we're getting a full line going out that away yeah so that was like there's some gaps on there and then this is a full line now so that should once everything starts getting enough coal
yeah there's not enough coal coming down the line now what if we upgraded belt Or it might just be a case that there's just not enough miners covering that to fill the belt. So we've got everything kind of, yeah. Okay, next plan of action. Coal mining. So we've got a big mine over there, 24 million. So let's just run a spur line out to there and then let's put some more... Um, yeah, put some more mining drills down over that. That onto there, that's still got some fuel in it. So, this station is going to be called Coal Pick Up. That's going to coal pick up until full, coal drop off until empty. Cargo contents 2.7893,000. Yeah, it holds eight, I think. So the next thing I'll do after... Well, we'll set up this coal to sort of feed into the power station, if nothing else. And then, um, yeah, we'll get it to feed a couple of the trains, maybe, and then the power station. Once you've got nuclear power, you don't really need an awful lot of coal. It's only really used for sort of military stuff, uh, for grenades. And uh, you can use coal liquefaction, which turns coal into oil. So that is now waiting for, yes, there's a train all the way up there. So we're going to wait for that to come off that line and then we move again. So this whole line is just one big block. So I'll put down some signals to break that up. Maybe every other power pole I'll put a signal down. Okay, so that then needs a bit of power. And then, just as we've done with everything else, um, in fact, we will run that down to okay. So we've got one line going.
so where was the that need to sort of come down to about there doesn't it Just come straight down through there. Oh, that's annoying. All right. That should go all the way down there and make sure that the power supply is, see, rail signals in action. Every other power pole, wasn't I? Something like that, and then on this side as well, just in case. Mind you, we shouldn't really get any trains along this section of track because they're all leading up to the stations. The, the train should really only ever go up this way. That would probably take that out and just confirm that nothing gets broken. Okay, so that should now be, yeah, we're still not got enough power because we're, we need 90 something megawatts but everything down here is certainly getting as much coal as it needs Although, to be fair, it's only because we're doing a lot of research. If I just turn turn those off, if I turn that off as well, does the research stop? It might still be um, making um, making the science packs even if it's not doing any research so all the factories will still be working yeah that's still manufacturing everything there all oh, right yeah we haven't got any um we haven't got any plastic coming out is that again a side effect of running out of power or are we actually now getting low on no we've got plenty of uh crude oil coming in still that's still a full pipe That petroleum gas is still full. It's because that doesn't have any coal. Right, okay. 
So we need to make sure we've got plenty of coal rooted up this line as well. Right, we don't need the coal going out that way. In fact, we probably don't need the coal going out that way at all. Um, let's upgrade. to make sure yeah we need lots and lots of coal coming in here although there was a little bottleneck on there let's just see if that sorts it yeah still basically not enough coal coming in for the smelting all right then, so we'll get all the coal coming in basically underneath this iron. And then we'll uh, we'll merge it in with the lines from this uh, mine. Right, I will do that off camera. But we've now got, um, all right, we've got three of our four lines set up. We've not got the copper set up, but that's only because the copper mine here is just so close and we're just bringing it in on a belt. And that's still got 10 million in it, so that's fine. Uh, let's just have a little look at our Kavarek setup before we, before we leave it. 32, so yeah, we've, we're getting a bit more now. And in fact, let's put um oh, we still haven't finished no do we Yes we did make our productivity modules. Let's put those in there. Yeah. I'll have to Set up a belt balance on this straight away. So if nothing else, this single line draws from all these four lines. That should basically never run out. That's better. Um, we'll have that inputting from the left by default so it'll use up all of this coal that's coming in off this other mine first and then it'll just use this coal from the new mine to sort of top it up because now that this is sort of starting to run out i want to deplete this as quickly as i can really just to get it out of the way i mean i could just sort of take up the miners and just leave it but
So basically what we want to have is... I'll have two lines coming up this way. I'll basically come round the outside of the stone, I think. I'll have two lines coming up and then one will go to the plastic and one will go to the smelters. Although, to be fair, that has now sort of refilled it and that's a full line there. So, yeah, everything coming off here is still basically going all the way back out to there which is which is fine okay see it is coming down a little bit we're only using sort of 80 80 something megawatts but yeah it's Mining drills, assembling machines, stack inserters. I mean, to be fair, I could probably cut the power. Let's just see what happens if I go down to this um, huge iron mine at the bottom and just cut the power to the bottom half of it. So nothing down there has got power. And now we're within the range of what we were using. So it was all the mining drills that I put down that was using up all the power. So that's fine. We'll, uh, in fact, we can probably even just sort of... because there's still plenty of iron on this top half that we can mine you know and we'll bear that in mind for future reference uh, in fact let's do right we've done the remote iron ore mining we've done Kavar well we've yeah we've sort of done Kavarex um, right refresh I'll leave it there for now and I'll say see you next time.